Time to travel, travel and cruise tips. Dunedin is the first city we visited on our 13 night cruise to New Zealand. In this video, I will share with you some tips and my experience of exploring Dunedin and the region in one day. Let's talk about transport first. When cruising to Dunedin, the ship actually docks at Port Chalmers, which is about 14 kilometres or 20 minute drive from Dunedin. There is a free shuttle bus to take you from the port to the Octagon, which is in the city centre of Dunedin. If you want to go beyond the city to self-explore, a hired car is a popular option. You can also get a taxi. And of course, the cruise line offers shore excursions, which are another option, but they are generally quite expensive. We hired a car in Dunedin. We arranged a rental before the cruise. I wasn't able to hire a car at Port Chalmers. All hire car companies seem to be in Dunedin, and they don't provide shuttle services from Port Chalmers. We use Pegasus, but there are a few to choose from. As it is two or three kilometres between the port shuttle bus stop in the city centre and the car hire place, we decided to get a taxi from Port Chalmers to take us directly to the car hire. It costs around $60 New Zealand each way. Getting a taxi at the port is very easy. You only need to walk out of the port and there are plenty of taxis waiting there for you. Now, where to go and explore? There are plenty of things to see and do in Dunedin. Dunedin is known for its Scottish heritage and Victorian and Edwardian architecture. It is also known as the wildlife capital of New Zealand. The surrounding regions also offers stunning scenery and dramatic landscape. Unfortunately, if you are cruising like us, it is impossible to see everything in one day, and you need to take into consideration the travel time between Port Chalmers and Dunedin, so you need to be selective. Let's talk about architecture and heritage first. If you drive in Dunedin City, it is hard to miss the magnificent Flemish Renaissance-style building, the Dunedin Railway Station. It is the city's most prominent architecture landmark. The station opened in 1906 and was completed in 1907. Its sheer size, grandiose style and rich embellishments attract many tourists each year. And the good thing is, it is only a six-minute walk from the city centre. Larnock Castle is another one to visit if you like architecture and history. It was built in 1871 by William Larnock, a merchant banker and politician. Larnock Castle offers an insight into Victorian culture. There is also a tragic story about the castle and the Larnock family. Its garden is meant to be really good too and is rated the Garden of International Significance. You do need a car to visit Larnock Castle. It is on the Octago Peninsula, 14 kilometres from the city centre. The entry ticket is $45 at the time of recording. Apart from the railway station at Larnock Castle, the Olverston Historic Home and Toitu Otago Settlers Museum are also interesting places to visit. Even the city centre, the Octagon, is a nice place to visit. You will see a superb cathedral and Victorian hall and nice cafes to relax for coffee or lunch. As nature lovers, we visited Moriki Lighthouse and the Moriki Boulders. Moriki Boulders are located on Moriki Beach, also known as Kokohi Beach, approximately one hour or 75 kilometres north of Dunedin, up State Highway 1. The drive is very pleasant with gorgeous views of the region. The Moreki Lighthouse is almost on the way to the Boulders. The lighthouse is actually called Katiki Point Lighthouse. The lighthouse itself is not so much of an attraction, but there are many seals and wildlife nearby, and the view there is spectacular. I have seen many nice photos and videos of Moreki Boulders and their marvellously round shape, and the way they are scattered on the beach has always made me wanting to visit them. The boulders are calcite concretions formed about 65 million years ago. Each boulder weighs several tons and can be up to two metres high. According to Maori legend, they are gourds washed ashore from the great voyaging canoe, Arituru, when it was wrecked upon landfall in New Zealand hundreds of years ago. Not sure if it was because we didn't find the best spot, but we didn't see as many boulders on the beach as I expected. But they are still very unique and perfectly spherical stones that look so mysterious. 
that I can't stop thinking how they were put there by someone. To visit Maroki boulders, you need to go at low tide, so make sure you check the tide information before you go. The Royal Albatross Centre is another place to visit if you are a nature lover. It is located on Tai Aurora Head on the Otago Peninsula, a 40 minute drive from Dunedin. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to visit the centre as it was in the opposite direction to the Moreki boulders. There are various tours you can do ranging from 30 minutes to three and a half hours, costing from as little as $28 to $300 at the time of recording. Apparently, if you go to the public land 100 metres from the centre, you can see the albatross and seals for free, rather than paying for expensive tours. Talking about birds, we met a couple on the cruise who wanted to see penguins in Dunedin. While Dunedin is a good place to see penguins, if you are cruising, it is unlikely you will see them. At least not the wild ones, as they normally go out to sea during the day and only come back at dusk, when you probably already need to be back on the ship. Another place I wish I had time to visit is Tunnel Beach. It is a 14 minute drive from Dunedin, situated between Hyena Beach and Kapuhi Point. In the 1870s, the son of the founder of Otago Settlement, William Cargill, ordered to dig a tunnel to a secluded and sheltered beach at the base of the cliffs, supposedly so his family can have a private place to swim. This hand-carved rock tunnel gives Tunnel Beach its name. I read the walk to the tunnel is generally considered a moderately challenging route. It takes an average of 47 minutes to complete if you plan to walk more on the beach. Make sure to come at low tide. Now, do you know the world's steepest street is in Dunedin? It is Baldwin Street, located in a residential suburb 3.5 kilometres northeast of Dunedin city centre. In 1987, Baldwin Street was recognised as the world's steepest street by the Guinness Book of Records. The street is 350 metres long. Its official maximum gradient is 19 degrees. So the ground rises 1 metre for every 2.86 metres you walk. It is quite steep. Walking up is tiring, but if you are fit, it should only take 10 to 15 minutes to the top. We also saw a taxi taking visitors up and down, but it looked a bit scary. Not sure what the people in the car felt. There were lots of tourists there when we visited, and it is certainly interesting to visit. There are also nice views of Dunedin's green surrounds from the top. I wonder what the residents think of the popularity of the street though. I've provided web links below if you want to check these places out. Which of these places would you want to visit or have visited? Leave a comment below and let me know. Before docking at Port Chalmers, we cruised in the Fiordland National Park. Why not watch this video now to find out more about the beautiful landscape of New Zealand?